I'd like to introduce everyone in our Mental Toughness Academy community to Jean Zanetti. Jean has a master's degree in exercise science and sports psychology. He was a nationally ranked all Ivy League wrestler at the University of Pennsylvania. Jean calls himself a peak performance specialist and is the founder of Z Fanatical Fitness. So let's get going with some questions on how athletes can improve their mindset. So everyone knows confidence is important, of course, but what can you do to improve your confidence? Is there something you could do? Yeah, definitely. And it's and it's coaches always tell you, just be confident, just believe in yourself, but they never actually tell you exactly how to do it. And a lot of it is because they weren't really formally trained on doing that themselves. So, but there is, the first thing is to realize that you don't, it's not something where you have it or you don't, you can learn it. Obviously, we both know, we both work, work with athletes, but most people don't realize that, yes, you can build confidence with the right exercises. Now, th there's four major ways you can improve confidence. It's past performance, other people's performance, your motivation pep talks, and body language. So we'll get into all four of those a little bit. So the first one is past performance. We all have past successes, if not in games, in practice. So being aware of those times you were successful. Highly, highly athletic, uh, competitive athletic people, they're, they tend to focus on the negative times. They tend to remember their bad performances, all their mistakes, all because they have to improve, they have to get better. But confidence really suffers when all you focus on is the negativity, all the losses. So you should have a fresh list. Put it down on paper, past successes, past times you've, you've done anything well related to the sport. So now when you look at this paper, and really should be looking at it about four or five times a week at least, you're looking at it and you're saying, hey, I'm, I'm a real good competitor, I'm a very good athlete. That's the mindset you want to step in. You know, you focus on your negatives, you work on things you have to improve, but you have to also know deep down that you are a very good competitor. Now this, this past success, it's also, it's that and it's also um, your personal strengths. So what are areas that make you strong as a competitor, as an athlete, and also as a person? If organization, you were saying before, you're a very organized person, I would say that would probably carry over onto the, onto the field. That organization would be something you'd list as one of your personal strengths. Now me, I said I wasn't as organized, I tend to, I tend to wing things a lot, but maybe my ability to improvise is one of my strengths as an athlete. Mm. So that's something that I would also put down on paper. So it's, yes, you know, my, the strengths that are the past accomplishments, I won a county title, I won a region title, that type of thing, those might be accomplishments, but also my personal strengths might, might be my ability to improvise. Now what, and, do, what do you say to an athlete that has not, you know, just starting out in the sport that doesn't have success? Have, well, they always have their personal strengths. Okay. Their personal strengths that, that that can that can and will carry over to the field, right? right? The field of play. But also, I mean, they probably are not. Even though they're competing, maybe for the first time, I'm sure they've practiced before. And there has to be there has to be some some indicators of success at some level, even if it wasn't okay. So as a wrestler, the worst thing that could happen is you get pinned, right? So maybe maybe one of their one of their successes. It's just that in practice, they didn't get pinned against someone who's wrestled for several years. You know what I mean? So even even if it might not seem like a win or a success to maybe the general population, really be picky here. Like go digging, really dig down for, for anything that could be seen as, as a positive thing, right? And, and we're very good, by the way, at picking out something negative or a loss. Right. We're, we're very good at digging for a loss to tell ourselves why we're not good enough. We have to be equal, equally good at digging for a personal strength or a past success. Yeah. So, so that clarifies the past performance. That's that's one way to build confidence. The next way is other people's performance. Okay. So one of my favorite acronym acronyms is HOPE. H O P E. Mm -hmm. Hold on, possibilities exist. Mm -hmm. Now there's another acronym with it. Here you get hope by hearing other people's experiences. Right. So if you succeed in a sport, I say you know Wendy did it. I could I could probably do it too. But wait, it's not just Wendy who's had success with it. It's also this person and that person and another person. And all of a sudden it becomes, you know, I can do this, right? I think one of the things about The Biggest Loser on TV when you watch that is you see other people losing a lot of weight. And when you see all those people lose weight, you're like, you know what? They're doing it. They were heavy. That person was heavier than me. That person was, you know, very similar. This person's very similar to myself. I can relate to that person. 
So you want to have a whole list of other people who've succeeded in something that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And even even if it's something that maybe you're trying to do something that no one else has done before, chances are someone else has come at least close to what you're trying to do. Or maybe they've done that, but in a different field. Mm -hmm. Like maybe no one's gone undefeated in, you know, I don't know, field hockey. So what, what about soccer? What about lacrosse? Try to pull from those other sports. And again, it's doing research, doing some digging, finding reasons why success is possible. So H-O-P-E, hear other people's experience and you learn hold on, possibilities exist. Love it. Make, making those lists. And another thing with, with, with other people's performances, also each sport has its own technical elements, its specific skills. And oftentimes, there's different ways of, of, of succeeding. There's there's no one right way in wrestling to, there's no one right takedown. There's several different takedowns you could do. Okay, so I would look at the skill that I use most frequently and I would say, okay, who else at a high level succeeds using this skill? And I, I would use, and now with the perks of um, YouTube and all these other different sites, you could watch videos of people succeeding with the same technique that you use, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know, I'm sure in, in hockey, there's different ways you, you could take a shot, a wrist shot, a slap shot, all different ways. Well, if you have a, a specific um, preference of how you shoot, watch someone else who shoots with the same preference as you. So that builds confidence that again, if they do it, if they can succeed, you can too. Nice. So it's other people's performance. Now the, the third way we said was the motivation and pep talks. And this, this does work. A lot of people think this is the only way you improve your confidence, just, you know, the, the coach gives the win one for the Gipper speech and you go out there and, and get it done like the, like the movies and, and, and everything. But there, there is something to it. You want to surround yourself with people who will tell you positive things. You know, you want to stay away from negative small time thinkers. That would be the opposite of what we're talking about here. So just know what kind of things make you confident. Know what people, what movies, what songs. Really have a good understanding of what your personal on button is. And everyone has, we might have some similarities, but everyone is a little bit different. So what works for Wendy doesn't necessarily work for Gene, but you know what, I'm going to ask Wendy what she does because maybe I could take some of that. Maybe some of it will work for me. So along the lines of these um, uh, pep talks and motivation is your, your favorite quotes, favorite inspiring quotes, movies, songs, and people, and surround yourself with that on a regular basis. Great athletes do this naturally all the time. So now you have the knowledge to do it, you could just start doing it on your own. Right. So that's that's the uh, pep talks and motivation. And then finally, the last one to improve confidence is body language. And we already kind of spoke about this. And that's the way you act is the way you start to feel. It works both ways, right? You've heard about the study where you know they, they have people smiling for an extended period of time. And then after they, they gauge the person's happiness before and after smiling, and it, and it like goes up a little bit. Right? They get a little bit happier just because of the fact that they were smiling. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to pull you out of a major depression, obviously, but if it could take us on a scale of 1 to 10 from 4 to 7, that's a win. So it works the same way with confidence. We, we want to act confidently, and if that could pull us up on the confidence scale, it's only going to help our performance. But first, you have to understand what confidence looks like. I was going to say. There's, there's similarities between people between athletes, but there's also some idiosyncratic differences. So know what you look like when you're confident. How do you walk? How do you talk? Where's your head? You know, what do you do what do you do with your body? How do you move your body? Is it quick and fidgety or do you or do you stay still? Do you move fast? Do you move slow? And and all of that. It's it's just really important to get a picture of what that looks like. And if you have some difficulty with what it looks like in yourself, then I'd say use other people. Look at other athletes that you, that you see uh, that, you, that you feel are very confident and see what they're doing, what kind of things they do, and then start moving like that. And you find that as you move confidently, you feel more confident. But it's it's really like a full, um, you're, it, this is a, to build the confidence, you have to do all four of those things. It's like it's like you're storming, you're, you're, you know, desert storm or something like that. You're, you're storming this, this whole confidence issue with past performances, others' performances, your, your pep talks and, um, motivation and the body language a full launched attack to improve your confidence not just doing one thing and hoping it's the magic pill now you know? when you talk about body language are you talking about as you're walking in to the match or game or are you talking about the day before what, what do you recommend 
really, really all the time, but obviously specifically in it's, it's great right before you go out there, right before you go out to compete. And also during the competition, what would, what would you look like if you really believed in yourself? What would you look like while you're competing? And, and you, and you see this all the time with, with some athletes when they're, when they're playing a, a lesser opponent, right? They have great swagger. They're carrying themselves real good. And then when they go against someone who's maybe equally matched or maybe a little better than them, you don't see that same swagger. And that's, that's not good at all. You should never be able to watch an athlete and know if they're playing someone good or bad, you know, or, and I use the quotes because I, I don't like looking at that at all. Are they expected to win or are they expected to lose? You should never know that by watching an athlete when they're out there. They should look the same way. They should be carrying themselves with the same intensity, the same confidence, the same positivity all around. So I would just recommend once you know these, once once you know those different four exercises for confidence and body language in particular, like we're talking about, do it all the time. I mean, when we get nervous, it, this is just human nature. When we get nervous, we always go back to our most rehearsed um, skill or our most rehearsed thing, right? So you have to be very careful. That's why even you know just using using good language. If you're a person who curses all the time, and then you and then you go out on the big date, you're probably gonna and you're nervous. You might start cursing, right? You know, I, I mean, you're not gonna have Tourette's, but you're gonna, you know, you, you slip a couple bad words in there and say, oh, you know, I sound like an idiot, or worse yet, in front of their parents, right? So how does that relate to sports? Well, if you're not doing the things, if you're not carrying yourself confidently in practice, if you're not carrying yourself around, you know, in the school day, you know, just all the time, then when you get out there in competition, when you're when you are nervous, when you really need to have the proper body language, it's not gonna be there. So carry yourself confidently all the time. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.